So what do you think about that big boaty ship thing? It's massive. It's massive. It's the big fella's still behind us. In fact, he's, he's closer than he was before in the other lock. That could seriously scratch my paintwork or even put a dent in the boat. In the last episode of Adventures of an Old Sea Dog, we traversed the first part of the Panama Canal, sleeping that night on Gatton Lake. The next day, we continued. This is part two. The Panama Canal is a 48 mile long waterway in Panama. It connects the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. France began work on the canal in 1881, but stopped due to engineering problems and a high worker mortality rate. Originally part of Colombia, there was a bloodless coup giving birth to the country of Panama and the United States took over the project in 1904. Opening in 1914 and taking a total of 34 years to build at a cost of 30,000 lives, the Panama Canal is one of the largest and most difficult engineering projects ever undertaken. The canal shortcut greatly reduces the time for ships to travel between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. We're now tied up at the last uh, set of locks before entering the Pacific and it is very, very hot. Everybody here is baking and we're drinking a lot of water. We've got this uh, big thing behind us here. They're coming in uh, as soon as the ship in front has cleared the lock. Uh, we followed them in really close and had all the holiday makers on there uh, shouting across and waving and stuff. It was good fun. But yeah, it's hot, everybody's tired. We were lucky to get away at 10. They did say 12 o'clock. So hopefully we're gonna to get uh, to the anchorages around Panama at a reasonable time and uh, I'll be able to get my people to where they need to be. But right now we're just waiting, which is okay. Everything so far has gone good. Um, we've got wind behind us. We kind of came in here at three knots in neutral. And we put a rope, we're hanging off one rope at the back here and we're sort of stuck to the wall uh, with the wind uh, and it's just very, very, very hot but I'm happy to be here, believe me, I'm really happy to be here Love these guys, they're called mules they're kind of uh, trains that attach themselves via cables to the ships fore and aft and guide them through rather than pull them through the locks Finally moved down at the end of the lock uh, just checking on the guys up front here. They're doing a sterling job. Pulling the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going, Jack. Hey. We've got a great view from up here. Of course, the water's got to go down to the same level as what's out there. Then we go a bit further. There's another set of locks, and we're out, and then we're in the Pacific. 
But the big worry I've got is um, what's behind me. <laughs> That's big. Will it stop in time? Walking back to uh, make sure that I'm at the right end of the boat um, if I need to do anything, but there's not a lot I can do because we're at the end of this lock. There's a bloody great drop on the other side and uh, coming right up behind us um, is this huge ship. I'm gonna need a bit more than a, a fender to fend off that if it doesn't stop. I think they've just stopped, but that's, that's about as close as I ever want to be to the front of a ship. That is my worst nightmare, right there. No, mate, don't pull him any further. <laughs> no, no, stop. That could seriously scratch my paintwork or even put a dent in the boat. So what do you think about that big boaty ship thing? It's massive. It's massive. It's so big. Water's starting to go down. You can see we were uh, about oh, four or five meters higher just a few minutes ago. Most of this concrete is original to the original uh, construction and dates back to the 1900s, the early 1900s. If you look at the lock gates, they were made pre-welding. They're actually riveted. They're over a hundred years old and they're still working today. That's engineering. I had a slight problem uh, rafting up to this guy because he's got a bit of an overhang and we're worried uh, about the rigging. So the guys there are pushing us off if we get too close. And we're tied tight at the back here. Uh, but uh, we couldn't get it as tight as we wanted to because of the current coming down from the locks. The big fella's still behind us. In fact, he's, he's closer than he was before in the other lock. But this is the last lock. When those gates open down there, we're going into the Pacific. It's been an awful long day. A hot, everybody's tired. He's tired, everybody's tired. And sweaty. And uh, I sh had a shouty, shouty thing just now because we got caught in some current and we banged, we banged poor old Shaddy. Uh, it's only a scratch, it'll rub out. So uh, not to, nobody, but I'm like, look out, look out, get a fender here. People went quick enough. So I'll sack them on. No, they were very good, excellent crew. So these guys have been brilliant. And uh, we're going to the Pacific right now.
here for the Bridge of America. That's the official beginning to the uh, Pacific. Uh, but I've got to concentrate. We're cutting all the, uh, the tires off the side, which we I hired. Uh, they've got to be sold or paid for. In case I want to take away. And I, I'm going to get rid of my roads as well. The journey may have been over, but the work wasn't. We still had things to do before the end of the trip. Had to drop the advisor off, and as I was maneuvering into his pilot boat, the big orange ship that was behind us uh, suddenly went past. That threw me a little bit. But uh, gonna let the tape run here because you'll get an idea just how scary it can be. Um, I wasn't getting any information from the front of the boat, so I didn't know how close or not we were. Uh, and I thought, having got this far, I, w I didn't want to make a mistake now. So I was a tad nervous at this point. You can see what I mean there, a bit of a sphincter tightening moment because uh, the sides of their boat were high enough to catch my shrouds and I didn't want them to touch. Next we had to go along and drop Berger off, one of the crew members. He was taking the tyres. Uh, we were selling them for recycling uh, to this guy It's just pulling up in a, a boat taxi. Uh, he was getting off the boat and then we were going to go around and find ourselves a mooring place. By this time we were all very tired, uh, Justin, Dale and uh, young Jack were going to stay on the boat with me. It's now some hours later and uh, we're in a, an anchorage. By this time it was something like 9 o'clock at night and in the anchorage was a party boat. There was all kinds of stuff going on including fireworks and lots of disco. So what do we do? Well, we opened a few beers and chillaxed. Losing all my crew this morning. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, that's really sad. The crew's left me. I'm on this boat all by myself now. Everybody's gone. And uh, that's the end of that bit, I suppose. Wow, what a super duper exciting episode that was. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Uh, thank you also to my wonderful patrons for their amazing support. If you'd like to help, check out my patron page. Uh, for real-time updates, I'm on Facebook, Adventures of an Old Sea Dog. All links are below. Please don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Love you lots. Until next time, take care.
slowly cooling off, but by God, it's hot. But it's been a, I mean, it's been a long day. Oh my God. Retake. <laughs> it's been an awful long day. Oh. She's pulling us off. Oh no, that can't say that's rude. 